Hi all, let me welcome all of you to yet another video on the topic of bolted joints. Today we are going to discuss the mechanics of power screws. It's an interesting video where I try to connect all those basic principles what you learned in engineering mechanics to the application of screws. And some interesting mathematic models that govern the behavior or the mechanics of power screws. So without much ado, let's get started. One of the key concepts that came out of the previous video was the mechanical advantage that is involved when you have a block of this kind resting on an inclined plane. Say the weight of this particular object is something like capital W and it is resting on an inclined plane with an inclination of theta. And the coefficient of friction between this particular body and the inclined plane be mu. Then we were interested to compute what is the minimum force that is required to slide this particular block up this inclined plane. Then we arrived at this important formula. The minimum force required is capital W times tan of theta plus alpha, where alpha is the coefficient of, sorry, the angle of friction, which is obtained from this particular expression, where mu is equal to tan alpha or the other way around alpha equal to tan inverse mu. So in the previous video we worked out a problem also where we established the fact that the minimum force requirement this cap particular quantity capital F is less than W so there is a mechanical advantage involved in this whole thing. So this was concept number one and now move to the concept number two. We are all aware of the fact that we have a mechanical advantage when we work with levers as shown over here. So something pretty similar happens when you tighten a particular fastener also. This is a rough demonstration of actually what happens. Assuming that this red line represents the shank of the bolt and let's say this long line and this small rectangular box they denote the torque wrench and the small amount of force that we apply on the torque wrench while tightening the particular fastener. While this side represents the amount of loads, amount of axial load that gets generated in the assembly at a distance which is equal to half of the fastener diameter in fact. So there is a small correction here it, this distance corresponds to 0.5 times the fastener diameter. So from this description it's clear that we have a higher load here compared to the load which we plug in through or using a torque wrench. Okay, I can explain you this with an another figure over here like this. Say now I am applying a force capital P which is at a distance of little a. So the tan, the moment created about this axis will be p times little a. So in, in response to that there will be a tangential force generated at this socket screw interface. This is the socket and this is the screw. There will be a force generated at the socket screw interface. Let's call that capital Q and since the diameter radius of the screw is little r that will exert a moment about this particular axis about the center axis of the screw which is equal to Q times r. So these two things has to have to be the same that means capital P times little a equal to capital Q times little r or in other words capital Q is p times little a divided by r. So from this equation it is pretty clear that the force generated at the socket screw interface gets augmented by a ratio which is equal to the fraction little a by r. From the picture itself it is clear that 
little a by r will be greater than 1. So there is a mechanical advantage in this way also. So now you may be thinking why this fellow is talking about all this simple engineering mechanic stuff which is seemingly nothing to do with the whole mechanics of power stores. So that's what we are going to uncover in the next 5 minutes. If someone asks you, where are power screws used? So mainly power screws are used when you require large mechanical advantage. And they are usually used to convert rotary motion into linear motion. Now can you tell me a few real life applications where you have seen power screws in action? This is one application. Here we are using the power screw in the lathe to allow the movement of carriage. We are using a mechanism called the split net mechanism that allows the movement of the carriage on the lead screw of the lathe. Okay, so this is one application where power screws are used. Moving to the next application, all engineering workshops we use C clamps left and right. So all these C clamps make use of the same technique of power screws. So here you can see the power screw and here you can see the handle. Now what is the moving into the next application? Screw jacks where you want to lift very heavy loads. When I show this figure, I request all of you to pay attention to a lot of details. Here we can see the worm gear and here is the worm wheel. All these things are there. Then there is this small truss bearing which is sitting over here. Mostly we overlook into the fact or we overlook into the relevance of these truss bearings. But be careful, pay attention to this small detail because we will solve some problems, very interesting problems where we will talk about the importance of truss bearings when you have these power screws in action. So this is a screw jack. Here you can see the lifting screw. And actually in this figure you have two thrust bearing which permits the jack to bear load in both directions. That's very important. Had, had this thrust bearing not been there then the lifting screw cannot take loads in both directions. It will be able, it, it would be able to take the loads only in one direction. But since we have two thrust bearings, it helps us in taking load in both directions. Make sense? Now the last but not the least, they are very widely used in linear actuators where you have a stepper motor over here and when you want to move this slider by discrete amounts, then this particular linear actuator will be handy. And here you can see the lead screw. The lead screw will be driven by a stepper motor over here and the slider will move along the lead screw. So these are the few applications we have covered. I think I covered four different applications where these things were we use power screws. Now one different thing is that I talked about the thread profile, the SAM, typical thread profile in lecture one. But for the application of power screws, we don't use the normal type of threads. We use special threads or threads with much more strength. To name a few, there is an acne thread, then there is buttress thread, then there is square threads. So let's have a look at them individually. 